Welcome back to What If Ruby Was Raised by the Grim, now being renamed The Black Rose, due to y'all's comments. And I think it's a better name. Well, anyway, without further ado, let's start where we last left off. We last left off where Ruby and her pack, pretty much of Grim Wolves, were heading towards Beacon, but heading off in the forest area, staying far enough away from Beacon to where it doesn't attract attention. Now we go to Crow, who's investigating the attacked villages. As he's walking around, as he kneels down at sight, there's blood here. A place that's that was supposed to be abandoned like a week ago has traces of blood. That's odd. The blood would have been dried up by now. And this is like a day after they left the village. As he takes a blood sample, I'll have to investigate that later. As he's looking around, try to find more clues. Now, he noticed that most of the Grimm in the area were gone because they were hunted down by Ruby and her well pack. Now, as he's looking around, he's trying to find something, trying to find clues. He notes it odd that there would at least be at least one Grim within a certain radius of the town, but there hasn't been. Which questions? As he starts to look around in the buildings and all that, as he walks into a building that's still intact, that they left intact, as he walks up the stairs looking around for any clues, as then he sees, well, a board. What is this doing here? As he's looking at the board, and every town that's been attacked has been marked. Wait, were these planned attacks? As he's trying to figure out which one's the next location, but it doesn't say, it just stops at this village. These were planned. I gotta tell, well, Osman, about this, because another town may be in trouble. But what do they have to gain from this? He thinks. As he starts looking around the room for any more clues, possibly. As he finds, well, pieces of like a grim mask of all of the type of different grim within the area. So like, the big crow that was in the last part that got killed by Ruby's mother, a piece of its mask is sitting in the room as well as a bear grim and a couple other grim that were in the area. Like, why leave all this stuff, though? He's thinking. As then, he hears ticking. As Ruby, or well, Crow, well, Ruby had placed a bomb in the building in case anyone had moved a certain object. As Crow hears the ticking, as he quickly jumps out the window and transforms into a crow right before the building exploded. So they're racing their tracks, I see. As he retransforms and rolls on the ground. Whoever's this whoever this is smart. And these are Grim attacks, but the only person that can control Grim is Salem. But Salem wouldn't do this. Well, Grim has always been known to attack it, but these are planned. Is someone making the, this seem like a Grim attack? By luring Grim in and killing them? I'll need to investigate more. As then his scroll, I believe that's how they call people in the Ruby universe, I'm not sure. But his scroll starts to uh, activate as he opens it, as it's Ozpin. Ospin, what is it? So, have you found anything? I was just coming to ch check on you to see if you found anything useful. Well, I did find mostly a lot of evidence until it was blown up. As Ospin says, blown up? Yes. Apparently, there was still a building left intact. But there was only a map of every village that was attacked so far. As well as some... Grim 
skulls. It was weird. Grim masks, pretty much. Interesting. Do you think this is Salem? No, no. Salem wouldn't target small villages like these at random like this. None of them have any connections whatsoever. So there has to be another reason. Or someone else is pulling the strings here. It does seem fairly odd. Do you think it might be the White Fang? I doubt that. The White Fang has been active in working in other parts of, well, the area lately. Towards Beacon. Which, they haven't worked that far out, is what I'm trying to say. And they have nothing to gain to attack these small villages. That is true. But as this investigation is getting deeper, I, I'm gonna need to try to follow the tracks the Grim in the area left behind. I'll see if I can catch up to them and find if there's someone leading them. You do that, but I will need you back at um, Beacon pretty soon. Very well. As Crow transforms into a crow, as the call ended, and he starts flying the direction he believes Ruby and the Grim went. Now we go to Ruby, who is currently, well, on one of the back of her siblings, as they're on like a cliff type area. As they see Beacon in the distance, just wait, Beacon, the, one of the schools of hunters and huntresses. You shall be dis demolished, and then after you, I'll go to the rest of the schools. And there'll be no more hunters left to stop us. As she's holding her scythe out, as then a few more of her, well, pack of grim wolves start to come up. As she looks over, what is it? As one of them looks down, what? As it nudges head like to follow. As she hops off her brother and follows. As she follows her brother, or well, the grim wolf, towards the cave. What's this? As she's about to enter, she gets the surging pain where she was shot in the last part. As she, well, falls down to the ground on her knees. As she's struggling to stay awake as the Grim Wolves come around her. As she looks at where the wound is and where it was just black where the, where the wound was, it started to spread a little. As it hurt. <sighs> As it stopped after spraying just a little bit. What was that? As the grim wolves that were there are worried about Ruby. As she gets back on her feet. I'm fine. What was that though? As she continues to follow the grim wolf into the cave. Now in this cave there are markings of... Te text, ancient texts. As she's looking at the texts, what are these? As she takes out one of the items that she had stolen from, well, the hunters, and it was a scroll. As she opens it, takes pictures of these t texts to keep for safekeeping. As she can't decipher them because, well... She doesn't really know how to read. She knows how to read some, but not much, because she was raised by the Grimm. Only to find someone to translate this. As the Grim Wolf starts to pull on her red cloak, or well, her black cloak, actually in this. As she looks over and sees, well, the Grim Wolf, what is it? As it goes further into the cave, as she follows, and it leads into a giant, well, cavern. Oh, this could be useful for us to rest without being noticed from above. We just need an entrance big enough for Mother. Can we make that? As she's looking at the Grim. As they follow, go well, they go down further into, well, the giant cave. 
as they follow the cave until it leads to, well, an opening, a giant hole, just bigger than her mother. There, that should do. Good work on finding this. As the Grim Wolf, well, in a way, smiles. As she then pulls out a horn, as she, well, blows the horn, as the Grim Wolf start coming towards her. As her mother goes around towards the big entrance. And I'm going to say in total there's around 50 to 65. We'll be resting here, everyone. Now, we must prepare for what we'll do next. As everyone comes into the, well, the big cave as it's starting to get nightfall. As she gets onto one of the top areas of the cave and just starts to lay down. As she opens the scroll, and then pulls up a map. Okay, where is the nearest village from here? She's basically not after villagers. She's mostly after hunters and huntresses. As she's scrolling, trying to find a village that wouldn't be big or populated, like huge, to where a huntress might be hiding. Or a hunter. As she finds a village... Although small, may contain a hunter. Very well. As she puts away the scroll, we'll head out tomorrow morning to search for it. As she falls asleep, she starts to get visions. Visions of Grim. As she wakes up in a cold sweat, as it's morning and the wolf, her Grim wolf pack is still asleep, what were those images? As she touches her head, as she remembers seeing an image of a huge, well, grim. But that was pretty much it. That's all she can remember. What was that grim? As she gets up, and, well, goes to the little stream that's coming down in the cave. As she grabs some water and... Puts it in her face to wake her up. <sighs> Much better. As one of, well, her siblings is behind her. As she looks back and sees it's her sister. Ah, uh, what is it? As the Grim just moves her head to Ruby's arm and just has Ruby pet its head. Couldn't sleep either. Well, something's definitely off here. I've been having dreams. Although it's really recently. But, they're out of place. I don't know what to make of them. As the Grimm start to wake up, it looks like the rest of them are starting to wake up. Well, I better start thinking of what to do next. As she walks towards the exit of the cave. As she hears, well, crows and all that from a distance. We're being tracked. As she walks into the cave and signals to all of her, well, grim wolves that we're looking at her to come here. As she starts to talk to all of them. Listen, we're being tracked by a hunter. So I want you to be careful when searching the area. And don't attack until we're all there to help. Do I make myself clear? As the Grim Wolves nod, good, go. As several Grim Wolves start to run out of the cave, whoever this hunter is, he would have been on top of us if I hadn't noticed. As she starts to scale the, the cave to get to the cliff area. As her mother is still asleep, but the, pretty much the rest of the pack is awake. As she gets to the cliff area, where two other, well, grim. And I'm going to give some of these grim unique features. So, we have a white wolf grim standing to Ruby's left, and a pure black wolf grim on her right. These are her brother and sister. One of them. As they're looking down at 
towards the area. Where are you? As she pulls out binoculars that she had stolen from a hunter. As she's using them to look for this hunter. Now they have semblances, so we gotta be very careful. As she sees her grim wolves in the area. As they're trying to follow the guy's scent, but can't. As we got a crow who is currently in the forest area. The tracks pretty much end here as he's towards a cliff area. As he knows movement in the forest. As he quickly well hides. As a bunch of grim wolves just appear. As he grabs his weapon. Then we hear a horn blow. As the Grim Wolves look up, as Crow looks up, he doesn't really see anything, because he's directly under the cliff. As the Grim Wolves immediately just backed off. That was strange. As he transfers, transforms into a Crow and goes towards the top of the cliff to see nothing. That's odd. But someone is definitely a connection to those grim wolves. As he tries to go look for some of them. But as he's going to look for someone. He gets well a call on his scroll. As he quickly untransforms and asks. Crow to come back to Beacon. Ozpin I was just on the trail of the possible culprits. Why do you want me to come back to Beacon now? Listen we're going to be having a festival here in about a month. And we need you back at Beacon. We think Salem may try something. Salem? Yes. I'm pretty sure this group is unrelated to Salem, as they've been working on their own. Very well. But I believe there's someone controlling this Grimwolf pack. I was just on the tail of them. Don't worry, we'll continue the search after. But right now, I'm I'm afraid so I may try something, so I'm going to need your assistance here at Beacon. <sighs> Fine. As he ends the call, as we see Ruby, who's hiding behind a tree, right behind Crow. Ah, so you're going to just leave us then. As she is about to pull out her weapon, as then she thinks... No. He seems more of a skilled fighter than the rest of the hunters. It's not best I target him at the time. As Crow transforms into a crow and flies away. As Ruby was watching this. I'll let you go for now. As we can see the shine within her silver eyes. As she jumps down as her cloak flows in the wind as she walks back to the cave. As the Grim Wolves start to surround her. What is it? After I told you, we had things to worry about. As then the two I had mentioned earlier. What is it? As both of them lead her towards Mother, who still hasn't woken up yet. As they go towards Ruby's mother, or pretty much the Grim Wolf's mother, as they go towards her. Ah, she's in a state of evolution for a Grim. I see. She'll soon reach the height of her rage, and will become even bigger as she is now. Well, that will be good for when we attack Beacon. But for now, the rest of you, I insist you hunt Grim in the area and grow stronger. As she looks at all of the Grim Wolves, we'll be attacking a village tomorrow. But until then, grow stronger by hunting other Grim, devouring other Grim. Do I make myself clear? As the Grim Wolves howl, good. As several of them run out of the cave, in groups. As we noticed, the same two that was with Ruby on the cliff are still right by her side. 
I thought I said for y'all to grow, go and get stronger. As the Wyatt one, which is her sister, comes up. As Ruby's arm just goes limp for a second. She stumbles as her sister catches her. Thank you. As she pats her scissors head. As she takes a look at the wound once more as it is expanded. The black. The grim skin pretty much expands. <sighs> I wish the pain of this would be less extraordinary. As she gets back up on her feet. I'm going to rest for the time being. Please go join the hunt. As she goes to lay right next to her mother. As the hood covers her face. As she falls back to sleep. And that is the end of What If Ruby Was Raised by the Grim, also known as Black Rose, Part 3. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this part and make sure to like and subscribe for more.